today we're taking a look at a few preamps and power amps from AMT Electronics. AMT is based out of Russia and seems to be taking kind of a different take on a lot of the style of devices that are out right now. So I decided to put a few in a video together and let's check them out and compare the differences. The first thing about what you may notice as far as these is how incredibly small the Brick Series pedals are. Uh, they're in a very small form chassis. You can tell by the size of my hand about how big they are. And the other unique feature is right here, you have a 12 AX7 in it protected by this metal cage. Absolutely sturdy construction, and it's well protected by the metal cage. On the front, you have a fairly simple layout, and it seems like it's across all the different bricks pedals. You have five controls, gain, level, bass, mid, and treble. The differences that you may see come on the left and right as far as other available options by slider switches. There's also some controls that will go into that uh, allow them to interact with each other. Now what we have on this one is the O-Base. This is modeled after the orange series of bass heads and definitely has that grunt and pleasing harmonic distortion that we tend to hear out of that series of heads. The gain function can get to full out distortion pretty heavily and adds a nice warm, thick range that we've come to associate with that series. I'm kind of impressed that they could fit so much of that inside of this pedal. But as far as other options, it's pretty straight to the point. The only other thing that you can adjust is going to be here on the side, and that's going to be via the bright switch. Now, both this and the A-Base series pedals have a bright switch, and they seem to have the same effect to me. To me, it was very much like when you engage the horn on a 410 cabinet or any other type of cabinet. That very high extended treble. So if you're a person that kind of likes to dial that extra in or something, and you're dealing with a cabinet that doesn't have a horn, these switches might serve a good purpose for you in that they imitate that almost exactly to my ear. Now, another thing to take notice on the side here is the mini pin controllers. Those are the things I referenced in that you could take a standard mini pin and connect these brick series pedals together. And if you press one on, you can shut the other off and send communication messages that way. I thought that was a really interesting feature and something I don't see in a lot of other pedals. It also will be integral to the new pedal board that they're launching that we'll be taking a look at in a future review. Now, finally up is the drive and preamp switch. What this does is it moves it from being more of a full preamp to a drive style pedal that you can put in front of an amp to maybe add gain or distortion or even just a pre-EQ and a boost that has the flavor of this amp. The EQs are still set to the same parameters and everything. It's just not as full blown a preamp. It becomes more of an EQ and boost, like I said. So you get basically two pedals built into one, both a preamp and a pre-drive to put in front of a head if you want to. So that pretty well covers the options for the O base. Let's take a look at the A base. So now in the same form factor is the A base. The A base is based off the original Olympic base preamp, which is a pretty highly sought after one that was a single rack mount uh, strip. And this has the same options uh, just like the O-Base. Uh, you have gain, level, bass, mid, and treble. This one has a couple other selectable options on it, though, and let's take a look at those on the side. So first up, you have a treble shift, which means that you can push the treble up in frequency slightly to get a little extra high end, if that's what you're going for, or just kind of shift where the actual treble radius sits. Uh, as far as my choice on it, I tended to prefer it in the down position, but the up added a nice sheen and sparkle. If you have a particularly dark bass or maybe your strings are just dead, that could be a useful function, or you just like brighter basses than I do. Now, the other switch we have is the mid frequency. Basically, same idea. It changes what frequency that mid dial is set at. One is 450 and the other is 300. So depending on where you feel you need to boost or cut and which is more important to you, you can shift both of those. And those were available options on the original Olympic too. So it's very cool that they added those in via these sliders and made it as complete a unit as the original was. 
Uh, again, my preference on it because I tend to get a lot of mud around 300. I like knocking that one out and being able to pull the mids back. My favorite setting as far as the Alembic was set flat. I feel like as far as color goes, the Alembic preamp and this series brick were more of a, almost what I would think of like a really high-end DI in a way with an EQ. It's not meant to give color quite as much as it is to be an EQ, a clarifier, and a nice just overall blank and transparent preamp to give your sound that extra control and sparkle that you may want from it, plus clarity. I think this does a good job of that. So flat was really optimal to me. And then if I felt there was too much mud, I'd put the, the dial on 300 and pull a little bit of that. Now on the other side, you can see, again, same option as the other Brick series. You have the option of preamp or drive. So you can use this as a straight preamp or Again, use it as an EQ boost and maybe a slight gain addition to something else that you're doing, adding some pre-color to your main preamp or your amp, or if you just like going DI, using this as a bit of a boost for your signal. Also on board, again, are those same mini pins that allow these to communicate with each other. So last up is the Bass Zealot Power Amps. I use them in the examples in both the A and O bass. So let's take a look at them and see what they have to offer. So here is the Bass Zealot Power Amp. Obviously, again, kind of a trend for AMT, very small uh, form factor. Uh, this could actually fit probably, if you have a good size compartment in the front of a gig bag, fit right down into the front of it. Very light. Again, uh, I'm going to say, you know, probably not more than maybe two pounds, something like that, at the most. And there's definitely a couple of unique options here. This struck me right up front is that you have this thing called an attenuator, but there was no actual volume knob, at least to my eyes. And after I talked to the guys at AMT and I took a look into this, the way this is meant to operate is kind of interesting and unique. And when I got my head around it, it actually made a lot of sense to me. What you do with the attenuator is you bring out your pedal or your preamp or whatever signal you're sending to it at its best volume. And then you bring this up a piece at a time until you get to the red lights that indicate that you're getting a peak. Then you dial back one so that you're putting exactly the highest level of gain that you want to see into this power amp. And that's going to give you its optimal input. And then you have a full 300 watts out of one of these modules. At first, I wasn't sure how I felt about that, but then it kind of made a lot of sense to me in that a lot of times a power amp is off, you know, on a rack on the back of your speakers. And if you have your pedal board or your amp out front, that's where your volume is going to be. Your easiest access is to just reach down and turn your volume. So having this already set to a pre-gain and me knowing where my highest gain level and optimum is on the output of, say, a Bricks preamp, then I know I can just back it down and where my peak needs to be in volume. So everything's right down in front of me. I can control my volume from where I'm at instead of standing in front of my amp, then walking away from it, and the volume doesn't sound the same. So that was an interesting approach to it. And again, something they do a little different that really surprised me. But again, this is 300 watts, and let's take a look at the back panel. So the back looks fairly self-explanatory, but there's a little more going on. You have two amp outputs, and then you also have a line out, which is very cool, you know, having something directly from your power amp that sends your full complete signal straight out of the power amp to the board or to a separate signal processor if that's what you want. But the thing that I noticed was this other thing called a link. This is what makes, I think, the base zealot much more usable than a lot of these smaller Class D amps that we're going to find on the market and something that could really become way more useful to your rig. You have a 300 amp here. Uh, by the way, a side note, I have the rack ear attached to this one. Uh, that is optional and it does come off, so you're not obligated to have that on there. But I have a second one right here. Now, what you can do with these and this is where it gets pretty interesting, 
is that it's kind of like Transformers. You have these two little, if you can see it, pins in both of them. You plug these together like this. You get these lined up here. Slide them together and they become one unit. The link goes from one to the other and these become one actual full power amp now doubled in wattage. So now you have both of these linked for 600 watts. That's pretty impressive. So if I only need 300 watts for a smaller gig, bar, small club, something like that, I can take just one, pop it in a gig bag and go. If I'm playing at a bigger place and I need that full 600 watts and I'm running more than one cabinet that I want to run more efficiently, I've got this. So you could literally just stack them on and add wattage as needed. That was really interesting and unique. And I was kind of shocked that it's something with all the modular things that are going on these days that somebody hadn't thought of before. I certainly hadn't thought of it. But going into that position, then you have the optional rack ears so that you can clip them together, toss them into a rack, and then that sits back with your cabinet or whatever and you've got a place to put it that's not just being pushed around and things like that. So again, having a single unit, all you require to put these together is popping them together with the two pins and then going from one link to the other link, done. And again, all that's required to make this happen is popping these together with the pins in the center. It uh, holds together pretty steadily. And then link to the link. One cable, that's it. That's pretty innovative. I enjoyed that a lot. So all in all, a couple of really interesting units from AMT. Uh, I definitely enjoyed getting to take a look at these and I find what they're doing with really miniaturizing and downsizing things and allowing them to be combined in some really interesting ways is kind of changing the game a little bit. So thanks for checking these out with me. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And I will see you on the next one.